Hi, it's Gil McNeil. Welcome to Brooklyn Gardens on a, a sunny July, mid-July afternoon. We're just going to go through some of the conifers that we've got in this display area today. Uh, these are conifers that are minimum 10 years old. Most, most of them are 15 to 20 years old. They are mostly dwarfs and some are miniatures. There's pines, spruces, and, and I'll just start by talking about a couple of them right off the bat here. Right in front of me is a Pinus Ensenata called Baby, or might have a different pronunciation. Ensenata is a, um, a subspecies of Mugo Pine. So this one's probably close to 20 years old, one to two inches of growth per year, nice dark green color, lots of buds on it, tight, tight growth. This would uh, be nice in the landscape anywhere and would work well. That's the different textures that conifers have, different colors, different textures, um, just lend themselves to uh, a really nice landscape. And then in front of me is a spruce that, um, it's an oriental spruce called Skylands. This will be a pretty good sized tree eventually. You know, you can get 15, 20 and well, well over that height. So nice bright golden yellow color. Um, the inside is green. There's a nice contrast between the green and the gold. These Skylands do need some protection when they're young. As they age and they're in the landscape, the sun doesn't bother them, but it, they can get some sunburn when they're young. And typically it doesn't kill them, but they, um, they will get uh, that burn look, which is not very desirable. But really nice bright tree, and today with the sunshine on it, it's just, uh, this color is just popping out. I'm going to show you a few um, other spruces. I've got another oriental spruce. We just saw the Skylands a minute ago, and it's, it's behind me. You might still see it. This is a miniature. I don't have lost track of the name of it. I'm just going to uh, be selling it as a miniature oriental spruce, Picea orientalis. I might be able to ID it later on, but it's a really nice tree. It's grown on a what we call a standard. It's uh, grown higher on the trunk to show off this area right here so that it not so much down in the landscape and gets lost, especially with a lot of the miniatures. Um, people do like that in their landscape where it'll sit up higher and you can enjoy it and see it at level. I have a number of these that are grafted high like this and it's called growing on a standard. So here's a Norway spruce. It has a cultivar name of Eva. It grows an inch or two a year. Again, it would be a, a plant that would be about 20 years old, so well behaved in a small landscape, small yard, uh, dark green color, a bit of a gibbous look, puts out a little bit of a leader, it may have some conical look as it gets older and older, so um, pretty desirable when you have that all those qualities and to have a, a plant this age and it's well behaved. So next to that is another Norway spruce called Cluise. It has an irregular type of growth habit. You can kind of see some odd, you know, branches coming out of here. It grows, again, a little more flattened or globose in its early ages, and this one close to 20 years old as well, and it's putting on some, some height here. And this could be let go, or it could be pruned down either way, but you would buy, you know, you would want this in your landscape if you, if you enjoyed looking at a plant with some regular habit. Some of these can be pruned back and that would be just fine to have that irregular growth habit. It can be desirable as well. Staying with the spruces for a little bit, this is another Norway spruce that has a very tight, compact uh, growth habit. Uh, needles are small, branches are small. Um, everything very, very tight here. It's called uh, Dan's Dwarf and it's Picea abies or Norway spruce, so uh, mounding, globose habit. Another one with that same habit would be this uh, Colorado spruce, so get a more of a blue tinge to the needles. It is uh, called Green Mound, and so it's that blue-green color, mounding again, slow growing, 
a plant that grows, you know, two or three inches a year as well. This one would be more on the miniature side, this, this spruce right here. And then right behind me is a, an oriental spruce um, called Green Knight. And this cultivar was discovered right here in Mount Vernon where we are by Wells Nursery. Uh, nice dark green color, slow growth habit, upright, very, pretty much all we looked at uh, the Skylands a little bit earlier. Similar growth habit to that, maybe a little slower growing, not, won't be as quite as large a tree, but a, but a very nice uh, focal point in the landscape. So moving on, we're gonna look at some pines, some dwarf pines now. So this uh, is a black pine, Pinus nigra, with a cultivar name of Brepo. So it is, uh, again, a somewhat flat, mounding, uh, interesting looking at the particularly you know the new growth on it as you look into the you can see the contrast between the green almost a light green almost a, a, a yellowish or whitish look in there where the buds are so that is a, a great looking plant uh, several inches of growth per year um, very nice compact dense, dense plant and this plant right here is called Little Brawly. It is a scotch pine and um, it has that, again, not an upright habit, but this uh, mounding, mounding habit with um, nice tight growth, um, lots of, you know, dense foliage here. Typical scotch pine type needles with that gray-green color coloration here so that's a, it's a great plant and then uh, down below me is a mugo pine called Karsten's winter gold you can see just a tiny bit and you'll see a little bit of gold from last year's needles the new needles come out with uh, the typical green uh, that a mugo pine would have and then this winter it'll it'll color up with a nice gold color it's very much uh, a desirable plant and adds interest in the winter time. I'm holding a scotch pine, Pinus sylvestris, hillside creeper. Flat, not globose, but flattish growth. And it shows the branching nicely. Sometimes these can be very dense, but most of the ones that um, I've grown and I've seen uh, will have this open, open area in the middle. So it has a Nice look, it can even be used as a ground cover, but it's a nice specimen tree as well. Grows several inches a year, three, four, five, some, something like that. And um, the slow growers. And I mean, this one, we talked about when grafting on standards, and at times you'll find this one grafted up a little bit higher. So it's up in the air, but nice and nice and flat. I've got a couple of Japanese white pines in front of me that are very interesting. This one with some variegation. Well, they both have variegation, but this one shows a lot of gold into it. And it's called Goldilocks. So uh, the needles um, have a little bit of a curl to them. It's slow growing. Um, some sun protection may be necessary. Uh, you can see this one's been in full sun and it's doing just fine right now. And it's got some the cones on it. Uh, there's a cone right there. Nice small little cone that fits the size of the plant. So people, this one is a very much an eye catcher. And this one as well, um, I really like it. It's what we call, uh, bonsai people like to call this movement or when the trunk has the, uh, some curvature to it, kind of lays over and has a little bit of this. But it's got some yellow, uh, variegation in the center of the needles that show really nice. This one has really a nice look. Um, it can these pines can be controlled for growth as well, slow growing, but you can also candle them. By candling, it's taking off the new growth that that comes. It looks like a candle, and it's already uh, grown and they've, they've grown out. And that's where all the needles, the new growth, uh, comes from every year. So also different branches can be taken out at different times as well. We've got a little addition here at Brickland Gardens. My grandson Carter has decided to raise chickens. So we live in farmland here in Mount Vernon 
and one of his friends had chickens and down the street there's a blueberry farm and, and there's someone down there that raises chickens. So they were able to acquire some chickens. He happened to have a chicken coop right, right here as well, a small one. So Carter took the initiative to build a fence and build, take care of the, the nesting area and get a feeder and water and he's learning all about chickens. So what do you think the the best thing about raising chickens? I don't know. I think it's I think it's just cool to raise animals. Uh-huh. And it is. Yeah, I've just never raised an animal on a farm before. So I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so the white one over there, I named it Mordecai. Um, this black and white, it's called a Plymouth Rock. I named that one Tina. And then the gray one right here is Ruby. Thanks for watching and uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.